Good morning, everybody. It's 9 o'clock, and 9 o'clock is with me, Father Warner. Today, uh, we are still in Chapter 7. It's the Thursday of the fifth week in Ordinary Time. We are still studying Mark Chapter 7, verse 24 to 30, and I've entitled today's teaching, Right from the Start. It's a very, very interesting gospel. So please open your Bibles and keep a highlighter with you or a pencil so that you can mark certain words and uh, lines. And as I read it, uh, you know, just put a little pencil marking uh, for a word or a sentence that uh, strikes you. So let's read the text. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know where he was, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast out the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying this, you may go. The demon has set your daughter, has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when you look at this text, and if you understand Jewish um, traditions, you will realize that everything seems wrong about this entire narration. And it's so odd that I begin a teaching by saying everything seems wrong about the tradition, the narration. Okay, what's so wrong therefore? Or what seems so wrong therefore? First of all, we know that Jesus has left um, very clearly. He has left Galilee alone. Or so it seems he has left it alone. We do not know whether his disciples are with him. Because today's text opens with the words... From there he set out and went to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know where he was. So it's just he set out. That's verse 24. From there he set out. It's not he and the disciples. And then we are told he enters a house in Tyre. Now Tyre and Sidon, as you will hear uh, in tomorrow's text in verse 31, there's a reference to Sidon. Tyre and Sidon were both in the Gentile region. Outside Galilee, outside the Jewish uh, region, is the Gentile region. The Gentiles were the non-Jews. And he seems to quite probably be residing in a Gentile home. I mean, just the thought of entering a Gentile home is unthinkable. Just the thought of it for a good Jew, and then Jesus is a rabbi, which makes it doubly wrong. That's why I said so many things about this narration seem wrong. In this house that he enters, he wants to be alone, but people know that he is there and he encounters and he begins to not only encounter, but he's having a dialogue with a woman who at that time was most certainly considered the wrong gender for a self-respecting rabbi to be seen with. Imagine a rabbi alone in the house, evidently it seems like he's alone, with a Gentile woman. To make matters worse, she was of the wrong race and the wrong religion. Because traditionally the Syrophoenicians, we are told she's a Syrophoenician, traditionally the Syrophoenicians had been the enemies of the Jews. And what makes all of this even worse is that she has a daughter who is possessed by an evil spirit, which means that she has touched her daughter, she's become polluted, now she's in the presence of the master, he is polluted. For the Jews, this was like a horror story. Now, therefore, for any self-respecting Jew, just about everything was wrong, and yet, God's, in God's eyes, just about everything was right. Now, you must remember that the Gospels are not meant to be biographies. Many people treat it as a biography uh, of Jesus. But really the Gospels are what we would call post-resurrection faith narratives. 
the principal purpose of the gospel is not to tell us what Jesus did and where he went, but to give us a deeper understanding of the theology, the rationale behind the mind of the gospel writer in presenting to us the historical Jesus. So let's put this in perspective. Who is Mark writing to? St. Mark is writing to Gentile Christians. These were non-Jews who then followed Christianity. He is writing in the year 65 to 67, 68 AD. We are never sure exactly, but certainly before the year 70 AD, because we know in 70, the temple of Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans. And the references in Mark's Gospel are clearly before the destruction of the temple, unlike Matthew and Luke that make clear references to the destruction of the temple. This also, uh, St. Mark's community, this was a community that was made also to, was also to, to be ostracized by the Jews and their Jewish Christian brothers who looked down on the Gentile Christians like as if they were some low life and uh, you know who ought to have lesser privileges in the community. So Mark is fully aware of who he is writing to and the persecutions that the Gentile Christians face at the hands of the Jewish Christians and at the hands of the Jews much less at the hands of the Romans. Now it was a known fact that a Jew would not walk into Gentile territory not only for the fact of being defiled because the fact that he walked through Gentile community would have defiled him, but also because the Gentiles and the Jews hated each other so much that, you know, in all probability, they would have been attacked. And Jesus today does the unthinkable from what the scriptures suggest. He walks alone and it is clearly Mark's agenda to show that Jesus' ministry was not only to the Jews, it was meant to be for all, right in the heart of Gentile territory. Yet astonishingly, the kind of compassion Jesus that we are so familiar with seems to be in this Gentile area, seems to be very rude and very insulting to this Syrophoenician woman who has come pleading, not even for herself, but for her daughter. So was Jesus play acting in order to test the woman's faith as some interpreters surmise? After all, it was very well known that the Gentiles were referred to also very contemptuously by the Jews as dogs. The Jews referred to the Gentiles as dogs. And Jesus seems to be using the same analogy um, for this woman. She begs him to cast out the demon and Jesus says to her, let the children be fed first. Look at your Bibles, verse 27. For it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Is Jesus calling this gentile woman a dog. It sounds so unthinkable that our sweet, loving Jesus would do that. Now, St. Mark seems to hold a twist in this narrative. His presentation of this and two more miracles that will come is to make a point. What is the point that Jesus is making? That Jesus, that what is the point St. Mark is making? That Jesus came not only for the Jews, but he came, as I keep saying, for everybody. Now, such words that Jesus came for everybody would have been great consolation to his hearers who, as I said earlier, were facing tremendous rejection. Rejection from their Jewish Christian brothers, rejection from the Jews who were their elder brothers in the faith. The, the Syrophoenician woman, when you look at her, therefore, that narr narration of the Syrophoenician woman kickstarts a series of encounters, so encounters with Jesus, these are interactions with Gentiles which are bold but they are respectful. Now this woman who finds herself insulted and turned down by Jesus does not give up and she continues to debate with Jesus until she has changed the mind of Jesus in relenting to her demands. Now, in most of the gospel narratives, Jesus on seeing the person's faith, and look at this very carefully, Jesus on seeing the person's faith accedes to their request for a healing. 
and he will say, your faith has made you well. Not in this case. The gospel does not tell us whether this Syrophoenician woman had faith in Jesus. She has heard about Jesus, she has come to him, maybe she just sees him as a, a person who might be able to help her. It is the repartee that seems to win Jesus' heart with her. Yeah, Jesus says something, she says something. So it could have been the repartee that seems to win Jesus' heart. For Jesus says to her, he says, listen, for saying what you said, yeah, because she fights back with him, yeah, literally, she says, even, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And Jesus listens to her and says, oh, that's a wonderful answer. He says to her, now for saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. He doesn't say your faith has made you well. Your faith has made your daughter well. So St. Mark presents this Syrophoenician woman as one who, as a woman who won over the Lord. And if Jesus accepted her with or without the question of her faith in him, then so should the Jews. And so should the Jewish Christians accept their Gentile brothers and the Gentile Christians. So I want you to give it a thought. Perhaps this interaction between Jesus and this very feisty Gentile woman prompted Jesus to even work more miracles in Gentile territory. He must have said, wow, these Gentiles are wonderful. Perhaps it was a woman who changed the mind of Jesus because we, you will now read in the text that he went out and he cured a man who could not hear and could barely speak. And then Jesus went out and worked another miracle for the Gentiles in Gentile territory. He fed 4,000 people who were out with him for three days, hungry, not complaining, but were out with him. But for now, let's look at this text. It was a woman who was traditionally considered to be all wrong, who made it all right. I want to pray today uh, for also Gail and Alvin from St. Jude's Parish who celebrate their wedding anniversary and for my own aunt, uh, my uh, uncle's wife, um, Auntie Nancy, who celebrates her birthday. Let us also pray together that God may take away our prejudices and bless the women that we know. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, we pray today for all women, our online viewers, our mothers, our sisters, our daughters, all those, Lord, whose faith has been so tremendous that they just push themselves for the love of people in their family, in their life, to seek you, Lord. To ask for a cure, to ask for a healing, to ask for a change of heart, to ask for a new relationship, to be blessed. And the one thing, Lord, we know, they don't give up. Today, this Syrophoenician woman stands as a wonderful example to all of us to come to you, Lord, to struggle with you, to plead with you, to argue with you, to tell you our deepest needs. We want to hear those words, Lord. Go, go home. Your case, which you've been fighting for so many years, is resolved. Your husband, who is an alcoholic, is healed. Your children, who have left the church, will come back. The illness in your family will be taken away. Your financial problems will end. Lord, we just don't turn to you because we want something from you. But we turn to you because we desire to have peace in our lives. And tonight, today, I want to pray for that peace in the home of all our viewers, that they may testify, Lord, that through this prayer we make together, things have changed in their lives. Even if it is 
a slow change. Bless this day with your presence. Bless me, Lord, as I continue to teach the Gospel of Mark. Bless my staff. Bless all those who make these videos possible, who have supported us. For all our benefactors and donors to the children's home, I want to thank you, Lord. We do not know want because you provide for our every need. In your loving, in your most precious name, we make this prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, everybody. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and leave your comments. You can always get in touch with me via WhatsApp on 98202-42151. Have a blessed day. God bless you.